just keep pursuing on whatever you feel like you want to, or wherever you feel like you're called to. And sometimes it's okay to, to maybe be the oddball or the, the lone wolf and just be persistent in whatever you're doing and don't get distracted by, like you said earlier, the, the shiny object syndrome. Welcome to the Cashflow Chronicles. I'm your host, Johnny Katani, and the founder of Katani Capital Group. For the last two years, I've been studying alternative assets and now help solve the problem of creating passive cash flow for creators, influencers, and busy professionals by bringing you five episodes a week of easy to understand education in the world of passive investing. What's up, guys? And welcome to another episode of the Investor Relations Real Estate Podcast. I'm your host, Johnny Catani, and I'm joined today by Caleb Johnson. Caleb has been an entrepreneur since the age of 18. He specializes in value-add multifamily in Oklahoma City. His goal is to be a faith-based investor that people want to work with. Caleb, welcome to the show. Jonathan, thanks so much for having me, man. I'm really excited to be here and just got to say, I love uh, just what you've been doing with your show, putting out so much content and providing a ton of value. So I'm, uh, I'm excited for today. Likewise, I appreciate that very much. Uh, love getting um, some young guns on the show. Uh, it's nice to see, see at 24, I did not, and especially at 18, did not understand the power of real estate. Didn't really understand investing, uh, in general. And here you are. So really excited to kind of get, um, your take on everything. So let's go back to the beginning, which wasn't too far, just a few years back. You've been an entrepreneur since 18, kind of touch on that and, and what led you to where you're at now. Yeah, great question. Um, when I first started off, um, I think I met someone at my gym that was doing a uh, multi-level marketing, and that company's name was Amway. So you know, there's a lot of people that think you know a pyramid scheme and things like that. Um, but really, just loved the environment that uh, I was able to be around. You know, you're you're around these very successful people and positive people. And you can just kind of see that they might have what you want in life, you know, down the line, 20 years. And so seeing where they have come in life and just what they have, that was really inspiring to me as an 18 year old and knowing that there was more to life than working two, three jobs and trading time for money. Um, also having the opportunity to, essentially be my own boss, right? I, I have a hard time sometimes working for somebody else's dream and just really saw the value in being able to receive whatever I put out and the effort that I put out into whatever that is. Um, so really got excited about just owning my own business and the culture. And ultimately, I think I stopped pursuing that after a year but always had the entrepreneurial bug after that. Um, and I think maybe a year I kind of just worked and then learned about real estate. I heard that, you know, 90% of millionaires got their millions through real estate. And when I, I heard that, I thought that was pretty stupid. So, <laughs> um, I knew there had to be more that I had to unpack there and, I, I remember the first time I even looked up or researched real estate and it was on a YouTube video of kind of like a, I don't even remember what those big, maybe the home show or uh, just a really popular flipping show. And they had a YouTube episode that I watched and learned about. And then I learned about bigger pockets, which is, I, you know, call it like Facebook for real estate. So you can really get around some people that are doing what you're doing and they want what you want. So it's a great networking platform and learned about uh, the house hacking method where, you know, you live in one, let's say you buy a fourplex, you live in one unit, rent out the other three. And a lot of the times you're able to live um, for free, right? These residents, they're paying your mortgage and you might even get a little bit extra and you're also able to uh, get your hands dirty. And gosh, that was the case for me on that property, that first fourplex. Um, so I lived in one unit and then rented out the other three, like I said, and then did that again with a duplex. 
and have since sold the fourplex and kind of just transferred some money into some commercial properties. And now I'm more focused on the, uh, the commercial real estate side of things. That's awesome. I love it. What a great story. Um, you know, pretty, uh, classic, right? I mean, start with the house hack. I feel like that's, it's such a, it's so funny. We call it a classic story, but it's literally a tried and true method, right? Like, mm. you know, it works as long as you do it correctly. Right. Of course, like mm -hmm. you said, you can, uh, you know, it, especially when you get into fixer uppers, um, you learn really quickly what, uh, one person calls a fixer up or you might call like a full rehab and what other, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And right. kind of the, the subjectivity of it. But what was it that made you switch pretty quickly to commercial real estate? Yeah. Um, you know, I always had in the back of my mind, just through my initial years of learning about real estate, that commercial was where the real money was made. Right. You know, I hear um, what people might say is, you know, residential is kind of for cash flow and you can get out of your W 2 job and it's great for that. But if you want real wealth, legacy wealth, you have to go to commercial real estate because one, it's just bigger dollars. And so when there's bigger dollars that you're working with, there's more return and the returns are bigger. And also, commercial real estate is, um, appraised or valued at what the income level is. So compared to the home I'm in now is a residential home and it's uh, the value is based on what the neighborhood comps are, right? What they sold for. And, but if you look at a commercial property that the market still goes factors into that, but there's also the factor of how is the property performing how it, what's the income and expenses like? And so it's valued off of that as well. So I knew that was where I ultimately wanted to go. And I had in the back of my mind, you know, maybe five years down the road, I'll uh, take that step. I'll just get some more experience with the residential stuff, kind of smaller, and I'll just keep it there. Um, but I always had, I think, from the multi level marketing standpoint of networking and meeting other people. So I went to a uh, apartment multifamily real estate meetup that was local and got around some of these guys. And I think the first meetup I went to, it was this gentleman who's owns hundreds of millions of commercial real estate now. And he had the same mentality I did of he wanted, he actually built out his wholesaling portfolio first for gosh, 15 years. And hated it after 15 years just because it was so uh, it was a job correct and, yeah it's and, very transactional in that right. flip and wholesale that whole space right right and so he's you know he said ultimately you're going to be green whenever you start in commercial because yeah. it's two completely different animals um it's just two completely different things and so l start learning it now and he also shared his first deal that he bought gosh, he sold, he bought it. And then maybe two years later, he sold it and he made 2 million bucks on one deal in two years. Yeah. And in, in residential, I mean, you just can't do that with one property. No. Um, so I really saw that and really just felt kind of called to, to start pursuing this now because uh, why not? That's awesome. I love it. Yeah. The yield in commercial real estate is, is far higher than residential, relatively speaking. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, because if you go and buy a 50 unit, right, you go buy one 50 unit apartment complex, the, on a risk adjusted basis, what it takes to go buy 50 single families, a lot more work, a lot more margin for error. Uh, the yield is higher on commercial real estate. However, on that same risk adjusted basis, you have uh, a lot lower downside as well, right? Because you're dealing with more units. It's more like a business in the sense that, you know, you actually have to operate it efficiently and there's more expenses and blah, blah, blah. But anyway, I can ramble mm -hmm. on about that, but it is awesome that you recognize that power now, right? Learn it now. Uh, and so you've identified Oklahoma City. How did you identify? How did you find that living in, in uh, Mesa? Yeah. So right now I'm based in, um, in the MSA of 
uh, Phoenix, Arizona. And, you know, here right now it's uh, end of 2022. I think we're in Q4 and the market, I mean, the pr year prior, the market was crazy. You know, we were at a three cap and people were buying that at all, uh, all day long. So, um, you know, I used to be a loan officer assistant and my boss had 20 plus years of investing experience. And a lot of his actual investing clients were investing in Oklahoma. And he said, Hey man, you know, these guys are really smart and they're investing here. And at the time I had some 1031 funds that I needed to um, use. Otherwise I would get taxed at a, you know, that those, that income or that those proceeds, they were going to be taxed. Um, and I was going to get hit with a big bill. So I needed to use that and defer those taxes to something. And he said, Hey man, look, I think Oklahoma is a great market. And we went on, you know, the normal, I think Zillow or Crexy, some, you know, normal sites where you can view properties and looking at the yield and just the price and what the rents were comparing it to Arizona. And then looking at Oklahoma, it was ridiculous, you know? And I mean, these properties, um, I don't know, they were kind of cute, you know, looking at these nice brick homes and <laughs> being, being in Arizona, you know, we have the same, um, elevation. I mean, we live in HOAs type thing. So just seeing, I don't know the, the area, it just looked more green, you know, we have cactus, so it looked like a better environment to just kind of lush and, but mainly it was a yields. So that's ultimately why I, uh, why I started pursuing Oklahoma. Yeah, it's um, it's funny. I uh, worked with a group last year here uh, out of Salt Lake. In fact, just reconnect with them not too long ago. And one of the markets they work in is Oklahoma City, and you don't hear it too often, but it really does have strong economics. Um, it's not certainly not a Phoenix, right? Mm -hmm. um, where you know you just have this massive upside. You know, nothing like those markets or Texas markets but it's steady and it's solid and it's got good infrastructure, right? It's not too heavy in one sector and, you know, you can find good value add, um, C class value add and C neighborhoods and, and so mm -hmm. on. And um, so that's awesome that you identified that. So what does your portfolio look like now? And, and what does kind of the future look like for you? Yeah. And actually another note before we go there, another thing that turned me on to Oklahoma was, I think in the 08 pandemic, the, I guess it's not a pandemic. We're just coming out of, of a pandemic, but the 08 recession uh, rates fell, like the home values fell 8% compared to Arizona where they fell 54%. And then you look at California where they fell 75%. So it's a lot more of a cash flow play, but I'll digress. Um the oh sorry brother what was your question <laughs> uh what your portfolio looks like right now uh-huh the portfolio right now uh i have about 80 i have 86 units um across four assets and we have a 16 unit in oklahoma city and a 30 unit in albuquerque new mexico and 40 units so 220 units in las cruces new mexico and then a, a retail development in Casa Grande, Arizona. Nice. Nice. Okay, solid. So you're uh, pretty geographically diversified. Mm -hmm. So kind of um, switching gears here, that's solid. So what what does it look like moving forward? Obviously, interest rates are changing. Are, are all of those markets still... Are you guys still active in those markets? Anything change in sort of your strategy based on, on the change, uh, uh economically? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, I've actually shifted from pursuing properties in Texas, Arizona, and New Mexico to only focusing on properties in Oklahoma. Now that's not so much because of a, of an economic play. Um, yes, that, that does factor into it. You know, we can buy things at a, at a six cap right now, and that's going to increase to probably a seven over the next couple of years. But, um, the reason I made that shift was due to the, uh, boots on the ground that we have in Oklahoma is awesome. 
you know, I've been able to develop a great relationship with a uh, owner of a property management company that is very large and they're very heavy on growing their management portfolio currently. And, you know, with this smaller property, we've built the systems and processes to just duplicate that and replicate it. So, and I think on this one 16 unit, the management company was able to increase the overall income by 32% in about eight months. Wow. And so really, yeah, I love working with that team and think also it, if I want to speak with an investor and sell an investor on an opportunity that I have, it's easier for me to say, Hey, look, this is the only market that I buy properties. I used to go to Texas. I used to be in this, these other markets, but now I'm only in this one. And I know all the street corners. I know all the yep. brokers. I know all these people, all these bank relationships. So this is my market. And I'd love to be known as the Oklahoma investor. And maybe if God you know, changes the direction, then so be it. But that's just where I see that right now. I love that. Yeah, it's funny. Um, and I'm sure you experienced the same thing, right? You kind of get the, not necessarily the shiny object syndrome, but you, you know, I was just reading, you know, Warren Buffett says that diversification is for basically the un, um, uneducated, right? Those who just don't mm -hmm. understand what they're doing. That's who diversification is for. Mm -hmm. And while I, I certainly agree with that, you know, he's also a billionaire. Um, mm -hmm. But I agree with it to an extent. I do think it is important to be diversified some in some aspects. But yeah, I agree. What I'm saying for that is all my mentors in the beginning told me to niche down, niche down, niche down. And I was just like, okay, okay, okay. And as I've moved down, I've niche, niche, niche down. And here you are doing the exact same thing where you're like, yeah, now I'm only in Oklahoma City. Right. And mm -hmm. it's funny how that goes where you like really want to be all over. You just want to do deals. And then you kind of get into it and you're like, okay, now I actually focus on one place. That's the way to scale, you know, is in, is have those relationships, like you said. Mm -hmm. So one thing I want to touch on is we obviously mentioned earlier, you're only 24, a lot of young kids heavy in the crypto space, pro, you know, trying to get rich. It feels like instead of building wealth, you obviously stand out. Are people starting to gravitate towards you? Do you still feel like you're having to, like explain yourself and why you think what you're doing is not necessarily better, but you know, maybe just a little bit more proven. Yeah. So, so what you just mean is are more people kind of uh, maybe coming to me because they yeah. are seeing, you know, that I'm like other 24 year olds. Correct. And also, you know, maybe getting their butts handed to them in their crypto mm. account, like, okay, yeah, maybe, uh, <laughs> <laughs> maybe this isn't the space. Yeah. You know, um, I've been blessed to have some great people in my life to really um, help. They, uh, man, I've just been really blessed with some great mentors in my life. Um, people coming to me for the, that they're losing their shirts maybe on the stocks or the crypto. I have seen that a little bit. Um, I think whenever you start singing the same tune and you sing that tune for a couple of years and then people, maybe the market shifts. And so people say, oh, Caleb has been saying this for two years or Jonathan has been saying this for two years. Maybe I should, you know, talk to him a little bit more and just get to know what he's doing. And I have seen a little bit uh, uh, uptake on that. You know, I, I actually was coming back from Oklahoma one evening and a gentleman was sitting next to me that I think he just lost, gosh, 50% of his retirement account because of the stock market crash just in that, you know, over the weekend. And I was like, Hey man, real estate might be a good option for you because you know, this and that and tax benefits. And so it does plant a seed. Um, and yeah, I think regardless of age, if you're old, young, just keep pursuing on whatever you feel like you want to, or wherever you feel like you're called to. And sometimes it's okay to to maybe be the oddball or the, the lone wolf and just be persistent in whatever you're doing 
and don't get distracted by, like you said earlier, the, the shiny object syndrome. Totally. I love that. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And so now that you're, um, you know, focus, are you with a group? Is it your company? Are you solo? Are you doing co-GP? What model are you kind of sticking to right now? Mm -hmm. Right now, uh, Red Sea Capital is owned by myself and I do, I have partnered with other groups in the past and, you know, right now I, I really like the flexibility to partner with other groups, right? If I want to work with uh, someone that I've I've met at a meetup, or I've seen their portfolio and their business grow, then I might approach them and say, "Hey, you know, I just want to connect." And I think it's also very important not to get in bed with someone really early on, because I've made that mistake before. Yeah, and sometimes it it has turned out poorly, and sometimes it's been Same. okay. And it's okay to watch someone in their environment just see how they do, especially yep. right now with the market, what's going on, you know, just really see who survives this because 2023 is going to be a, a rougher year for absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Um, yeah. It's so, going to get worse before it gets better. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I, yeah, I think in 20, there's uh, some in the index where every recession, a trigger has been flipped and I think it was just flipped, you know, and so it's 2023 is going to be rougher. But anyway, so seeing what people do, especially in this season, and seeing how they uh, how they take that is going to show me who I want to partner with. Because, you know, rock stars hang around rock stars. Totally. And that's who I want to be around. Absolutely. I love that. It's so true. Yeah, I too have, um, you know, sort of uh, jumped into a partnership early, ended up costing me a good chunk of change. Uh, so mm -hmm. that's one of those lessons, though. You know, it's funny. Everybody tells you that, uh, you know, I even feel like throughout life, you know, even your parents tell you about friendships early on and blah, blah, blah. And you kind of just like, it's one of those mistakes that no matter how many people tell you, you're just going to have to make it. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it doesn't cost you severely, right? Like mine costs money, but luckily that's all it costs. Everybody moves on, um, you right. know, and hopefully it's not much more detrimental than that. But when you're in this world, the business world, entrepreneur lessons cost money, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, I like to call them lessons, not mistakes, but they do. They, they cost you money because money's always involved. Uh, yeah, I like but, that too. And you know, sometimes learning, um, especially when you're starting off, it's okay. Sometimes you do have to get in a relationship where maybe you do learn some, just being wary of that. Um, because you learning lessons are going to happen and it's okay to make mistakes, yeah. but Jonathan, like you said, just learn from them and, um, the take them for what they are just learning totally. lessons. And I promise if you lose enough money, you're never going to make this, that mistake again, because that <laughs> it hurts. Right. I it hope not. Deep. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. Totally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, Caleb, this has been absolutely incredible. Loved all your insight, um, fresh perspective on everything. We'll go ahead and wind down here. We'll jump to the final five. Mm -hmm. uh, first question, best advice you've gotten from a mentor. Oh my gosh. Um, wow. Uh, oh, geez. I, you know, the office, if you, if you're familiar with the show, the office, I just think of when Dwight asked Michael or Michael asked Dwight, what is the best thing that I've ever taught you? And Dwight said, don't be an idiot, change my life. So I don't know why that came in my mind. Um, you know, I would say just don't quit. Um, whatever you do, stay persistent on one thing. And it's okay. If maybe while you're persisting after that thing, you learn what, you want, or maybe that's truly what you don't want. That's not going to serve your ultimate goal. And that's okay to change that, maybe tweak your strategy, but don't quit. Continue on the hard path and you'll get what you want. That's awesome. I love it. Uh, what is about your career that makes you feel like you're fulfilling your why? Hmm. You know, ultimately my why is I want to help more people. And I want to lead more people to Christ. Honestly, that's, that's my ultimate 
reason for living in life. So being able to, you know, I'm working with a non, I want to start my own nonprofit. I have my own podcast. So um, I think the, the properties help finance a lot of that. And I think knowing your why is really the first step and knowing how, what it, whatever you're doing is going to contribute to that and knowing how it's going to do that. And if it's not, you might need to, again, make a little shift in, in how you're approaching your, your goals in life. It's awesome. I love that. Uh, favorite non-real estate or investment related book. Favorite, um, book, you know, I'm reading a book call right now. That's called the mastery of selling. And it's just on my mind, but, um, or how to master the art of selling by Tom that- Hopkins. Nice. Uh huh. Great book. Kind of long. Um, Zig Ziglar has a similar book and I love Zig. Uh, he's got some great content as well. And so just learning how to sell, because I think we're all selling in life. Mm-hmm. Shoot. If you're married, selling something to your kids, to your wife, uh, what's for dinner, you know, it could be something simple like that, but learning how to sell, um, even if you aren't a quote unquote salesman, that's not your profession, uh, still learning some of those traits can really help you in life. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Very, very, um, awesome skill to have no matter what, uh, if you could have any superpower, what would it be? Flying. I've always Absolutely. during dreams. Yeah. Flying. It just feels freeing. Love it. Dude, Couldn't agree more. Love that. Cool. Uh, last one. What's the best way for people to get a hold of you and learn more? Best people for uh, best way for people to learn more about me is going to redseacapitalgroup.com. And if you actually scroll down, there is a free due diligence checklist for investors that uh, deals with properties, how to find the right property. And so really simple checklist and, you know, it can maybe be a, a good stepping stool for people that want to invest, be it passively or actively. So that's the uh, best way. Awesome. As always, we will link that in the show notes, make it super easy for everyone. Caleb, thank you so much for your time. Absolutely incredible. Awesome. Jonathan, really appreciate you having me, man. I, uh, I really enjoyed it. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thank you again for tuning in. Who do you know that wants more cash flow? Share this episode with them so you can grow your cash flow together. If you enjoyed the show, make sure you're subscribed on your platform of choice so you never miss a new episode. Go to KataniCapitalGroup.com to learn more.